Okay, so on our notes today, we have two-step equations. Right before break, we are working on one-step equations. Now we're going to take it a step further, and now our equations are going to take us two steps to solve for them, which is really what that means. So this is called, these notes are called solving two-step equations. What that really means, 4x plus 2 equals 8 involves two steps. Say the variable is multiplied by 4. Then 2 is added. To solve, you basically have to work backwards. That's really what we're going to be doing, and we'll get some practice with doing this. But in words, this is how we're going to do it. If we're given an example of 4x plus 2 equals 8, well, we have one variable. We know we got to solve for x. We got to figure out what x equals. We're going to have to take a couple steps to do that. In this case, that kind of expression is going to take us two steps, which is why these notes are called two step equations. All of these equations will take two steps. So if we actually go through and solve this, step one. If we're using our 4x plus 2 equals 8, we have to undo the addition, which um, undoing the addition, really, remember when we said when we move it to the other side of the equal sign, you have to do the opposite um, sign. Yeah, you have to do the opposite. So since they're adding, what it, mean, what it means by undo the addition, you're going to, I'm sorry, that shouldn't be there, undo the addition by subtracting. We're going to do the opposite. Two from both sides. So this is kind of adding to what we were doing. First thing, you got to do the opposite when we move it across to the other side of the equal sign. When we're moving across the equal sign, we always do the opposite sign. If you're adding, you're subtracting. If you're subtracting, then you're adding. And the other thing is, what you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. Those are the two rules while we while we solve for these kind of equations. So if you're adding plus two to the left then you have to add plus 2 to the right side of the equal sign also. You have to keep it balanced is what that really means. So um, after we were to do that, we would have to do step 2, which means undo the multiplication. So what does it mean by undo the multiplication? How would you do that? By doing what? The opposite, the opposite which is what? Division. Division, exactly. Good job. By, I can say, by, what? Yeah, I'm going to write by dividing here. And since it's a 4 ox, you're multiplying a 4, we're going to divide, dividing by 4. So we're going to show how to do these in each step. We're going to go further onto it. So that's basically what we're doing in words. I'll give you a couple minutes to write all this down since we're handwriting our notes today. Um, and then we'll actually go through and solve the steps. So I'll give you about two minutes. Does that sound good? Yeah. To finish writing this stuff down before we go on. So going on from here, now we're actually going to show this using the equation. So our equation is 4x plus 2 equals 8. Well, in step one, we said we want to undo the addition. Our goal is to get the variable, which our variable is x. We want Our goal is to get x by itself because we want to figure out what x equals. So we want to move those numbers away from x to figure that out. So first, we see that 4x plus 2. Well, connected to that x, there's, they're adding 2 to it. Well, let's move the 2 first. That's our first step, just like we said in our words up here in red. So if they're adding 2, what's the opposite? What am I going to do to that, Maria? Subtract 2. So I'm going to subtract 2 here, 
And remember, what I do to one side of the equal sign, I have to do to the other. You have to. So you have to keep a balance. Well, 2 minus 2, you can just cross it off. If you really want to put a 0 down here, if that makes, makes more sense to you, that's fine. If you want to just leave it blank and not even put anything, as long as you cross it off up here, I, I see that you're canceling it. So on the left, you have 4x. 8 minus 2 on the right gives you? 8 minus 2? Oh, 6. 6. six. Awesome. So really, this is saying, I'll write it in blue, 4x equals 6. Well, I still have that 4 connected to the x. When they're next to each other like that with no signs, there's a, a number and a variable right next to each other, that means they're multiplying those together. So that really is saying 4 times x without a multiplication sign or anything. So since they're multiplying, I want to get x by itself, and i got to do the opposite, just like they said in step 2. Undo the multiplication by... Dividing. So I'm going to divide 4. What I do to the left side of the equal sign, I have to do to the right side. So I'm going to divide 4. Well, 4 divided by 4 cancels that. I mean, that gives you 1. So we don't need to write 1 unless you really want to. So on the left, you're left with x. 6 divided by 4, 1.5. x equals 1.5. So what you can always do, which is so nice with this stuff, is you can check your work. So on quizzes and tests, um, depending on what they're asking you, we might ask you to check your work. By doing that, it says, plug this number in for x and see if your work is correct. So doing that, we would say 4. Instead of x, I'm going to put in parentheses. I'm going to multiply 1.5 to it, plus 2, and I'm going to hope that it equals x. Well, what's 4 times 1.5? 6 plus 2. So 6 plus 2 is 8. Does 8 equal 8? Yeah. So that's me checking my work down here in the bottom left. You can always do that on these type of equations. Even if you're given two variables, an x and a y, you can still always check your work, which is nice with this stuff because you know you did it right before you even turned it in, which is a bonus. If your left side does not equal your right side, then that number you plugged in for x is not right. Any questions on this? No? Okay, we're going to just do some practice then. That's basically what a two-step equation is. It takes two steps to solve for that x. Can I erase this? Yes? Okay. So, how it would be written on like a quiz or homework, it would say examples. Um, the directions would say solve each equation. Then it says, check your work, which is what I just showed you how to do. That's the nice thing about doing these. You can always check it to make sure it's right. So that would be like the directions there. And say they gave us an expression 6m. They're not always just x's and y's. Sometimes they give us a t or m, whatever you want. So how would I start solving this? My goal is to get m by itself. I want to see what m equals. Stephanie, how would I solve this? How would I start it? Tell me my first step. Since we have a 6m minus 4. Well, I want to get m by itself. So how am I going to do that? Well, what do you want to move first? What number? You want to move the 4. I think that's a good idea. They're subtracting 4. And remember, when we move over the equal sign, when you're moving a number over the equal sign, you have to do the opposite of what they're doing. So since they're subtracting, what are you going to do? Add. add. Exactly. So I'm going to add 4. Add 4. Well, negative 4 plus a 4 is 0. It cancels out. So you can just cross it off. So on the left, what? Right, they're subtracting 4, so we have to do the opposite. We're going to add it. So negative 4 plus 4 would cancel out. And on the left, we have 6m. And now 14 plus 4 gives you? OK. So that would be like our step 1. That's step 1. But these are two-step equations. We don't have m by itself yet, so we know we're not done. So what's my next step? What's the step two? How would I solve that next one, Samantha? 
I have 6m equals 18. Perfect. Since they're multiplying 6 times m, we know we have to do the opposite, which the opposite of multiplying is going to be dividing. Our 6 divided by 6 cancels out, and on the left I have m. 18 divided by 6 is 3. Perfect. And then they said, they could solve the equation. Well, I did. We came up with m equals 3. That's solving it. That's our first step. Here's our second step. Now we got to check it. So I'm basically plugging 3 in for where m is in the equation. So 6 times 3 minus 4 should equal 14. What's 6 times 3? 18. And I still have minus 4. So 18 minus 4. So 14 equals 14. Is that correct? Yeah. So having 3 equal m is correct. Any questions as to how we solve that? No questions? Okay. So going on our next one. This one looks a little tricky, but we can still do it. N over negative 8 plus 2 equals negative 3. That's really saying we're dividing, the, thank you, we're dividing that negative 8. So I know I'm doing two-step equations, so I know I have to do what's the first thing I should do. My goal, since the variable is N, it's not always X and Y, since my variable is n, I want to get that by itself. So, Philip, what would be my first thing? Okay. We want to get n by itself. So, I want to move all my numbers. I'm basically combining my numbers together. So, yeah. well, we have an n over negative 8 plus 2. We want to first move that number that's not connected directly to n. So, we want to do the opposite. Exactly. What would that be? They're adding 2. Yeah, exactly. We want to subtract 2. We want to move that 2. So when I do that, 2 minus 2 does what is it? 0. It cancels out. I'm left with n over negative 8 equals negative 3 minus 2. What does that give me? Negative 1. Oh. That's, yeah, negative 5. Wasn't paying attention there. So if we have, if you look at this, let me see if I can. If we remember, looking at a number line, if I have negative 3, here's negative 2. If we're looking at a number line, yeah, it's a, it's a negative 5. So if we look at a number line and I'm at negative 3 right there, and I'm subtracting, like I'm subtracting my 2, I'm going further away from 0. Well, if my 0 is over here, this is 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, I'm going farther away from 0. So it's really saying I'm moving two places this way, which would put me at negative 5. That's why I got negative 5 here, because of that negative. If I were to add 2, then I'd be going in the opposite direction, and I'd be moving closer to 0. Does that make sense? Sometimes it's easier to picture it on that number line. So from here, now this gets a little tricky. It's the opposite of what we were looking at before. Now I have n over negative 8 equals negative 5. How would I do that, Maria? Perfect. Yes, here's my first step up here. I subtracted 2. Well, now here, we're used to it being multiplied right off the bat. Well, in this case, they divided it. They did n divided by negative 8. But like Maria said, we have to do the opposite. So since they're dividing, we multiply. So we're going to multiply, I'm going to put in parentheses, multiply negative 8. we got to keep that negative sign with it. So negative 8 multiplied to 8, that cancels out. And you're left with n on the left. And what I do to the left, I have to do to the right. So what is negative 5 times negative 8? Negative times a negative makes it a positive. So we know it's going to be positive. And then 5 times 8 is 40. Exactly. So now, this is my solution, and now I need to check to make sure that we calculated that right. Since we're doing two steps, um, we may miss something. We might, might have done a step wrong. As we go on through multi-steps, multi-step equations, it's easier to make mistakes, so that's when the checking really comes in handy. So if we plug this back in, we do 40 
over negative 8, because I'm plugging it in for n, plus 2, I want it to equal negative 3. Well, what's 40 divided by negative 8? Negative 5. And then negative 5 plus 2? Negative 5 plus 2. So now that I'm adding, I'm getting closer to 0. Negative 3. Exactly. So does negative 3 equal negative 3? Yeah, it does. So we know having n equal 40 is correct. Is there any questions as to how we did that one? No? I'll give you a minute to finish writing this one down. So let's do another example. I'm going to give you this one to do with your shoulder partners. We have negative 9 equals 8k minus 1. So our variable that we want to solve for is k. you got to work to get k by itself. We have a negative 9 equals 8k minus 1. So they're subtracting 1 and they're multiplying 8 to that k. You want to work to get k by itself. I'll give you about like one or two minutes. Does that sound okay? To solve for k, work with your shoulder partners. Make sure you're checking your work. Once you solve for k, make sure that what you have for k is correct by plugging it back in. Lily? So what is the first step you would take? Peyton, what's the first step you would take to solving this? You would add 1 to both sides, right? Okay, since they're subtracting 1, you're right. We're going to start by adding 1. We want to move that 1 away from our k. That cancels out, and on the right, we're left with 8k equals, what does that give us? Negative 8. So that would be like our first step. Our second step would be what, Rebecca? Negative 8 equals 8K. Yeah, divide. Yeah, they multiplied 8 times K, but we want to get that K by itself. Since they're multiplying, we're going to divide. Exactly. So this is when it gets tricky. Negative divided by a positive remains what? It remains a negative. When I divide 8 times 8, or 8 divided by 8, that gives me K because my 8s cancel out. And a negative 8 divided by a positive 8 gives me negative what? Negative 1. Awesome. And that's like our second step. That's why these are two-step equations. So if I go back in to this equation, the original problem they gave us, I can check my work. Negative 9 equals 8 times negative 1. Negative 8 minus 1. So now I have negative 8 minus 1. Well, I'm becoming a further, a larger negative number. So negative 8 minus 1 gives me negative 9. Does negative 9 equal negative 9? Yeah, it does. Any questions as to how we did that? So our next question right here, 5, negative 5 plus 10x. We're getting lots of practice with this. This is how we are doing our two-step equations. So if I have negative 5 plus 10x equals negative 65, I want to solve for x. So Becky, what would my first step be? This one's a little tricky here. Becky, how would I do this first step? Add what? Yeah. So since, since it's a negative 5, I'm basically going to add 5. Negative 5 plus 5 gives me what? Zero, it cancels out, and I have 10x, and I have to add 5 to this side. I have to do the same to both sides. So negative 65 plus 5 is still a negative, but what's the number now? Negative 60. Make sure you're going the right way. If you're picturing a number line, that might help you if you picture a number line or even draw it out if you have to. Negative 60. My last, that was my first step. My second step is what, Robert? Divide time because they're multiplying 10 times x. My 10s cancel out and leaving me with x. Negative 60 divided by 10. You're right, negative. Negative 6. Negative divided by a positive remains a negative. So I would put that 
that first, put a negative there, and then 60 divided by 10 gives me 6. So our answer is negative 6. Now we got to check that. So negative 5 plus 10, and instead of x, I'm going to put negative 6 there. 10 times negative 6 is negative 60. So what's negative 5 plus negative 60? Negative 65. Does negative 65 equal negative 65? Yeah, it does. Oh. Oh, no. So if I show you a decimal doing this, I have 1.2 equals 3s minus 1.8. Make sure we're staying quiet, guys. To do this, I want to get s by itself. So I'm going to add 1.8 because they're subtracting. My 1.8s cancel out, and I'm left with 3s on the right. What's 1.2? I'm sorry, plus 1.2 plus 1.8? 3. And now i got to divide because I want s by itself, so I'm going to divide 3 to both sides. My 3s cancel out. What's 3 divided by 3? 1. One. So now I want to check my work to make sure that really e s really does equal 1. So I'm going to do 1.2 equals 3. Instead of s, I'm going to put a 1 in there. Oops, why do I need a parenthesis there? 3 times 1 is what? 3. So when I simplify this, what's 3 minus 1.8? 1.2. No, 1.2. Does 1.2 equal 1.2? Yeah, it does. All right, no homework today. We will get our homework tomorrow on this. Keep this in a safe spot.